somebody who uh, uh, is taking calculus, we win. If we pick somebody who's taking French, we win. So we expand our probabilities, so we want to add them together. Right? Expand the probability that we uh, um, it. I don't know what to do. grow it, make it bigger. So we're going to take the probability that somebody's in calculus, plus the probability that somebody's in French. But if we just add these two, we have some overlap, perhaps. One, two. If, the, if there are people here in calculus that are also in French, that means that there are people in French who are also in calculus and have them twice. I have 12. We want to take away the probability that that person, that, that a person is in calculus. So, probability that they're in calculus will be 38 out of 100. Or you could just do these numbers and then out of 100, right? Just count the people and take it out of 100. But average is probability, so we'll do probabilities. 20 out of 100 is probability that they'll be in French, minus the 12 out of 100 chance that they're in both. So it's so 46 out of 100. Uh, 23 out of 50. What's that? 23 out of 50. specific order. Yeah, that's that's going to happen in a specific order. So how many ways can the first person come in first? Twelve. How many ways can the eleven. second person come in? Third? Yeah. Ten. Ten. So it's small enough. So 12, 11 time, 12 times 11 times 10 wouldn't be too hard. Or we realize, we recognize that we're just permuting three of 12 things, so people. So we have 12 people that we are permuting groups of three. That's, the formula is just going to give you that, right? It's going to be 12 factorial over 12 minus 3 factorial. And that's 12 factorial over 9 factorial. And that's going to be 12 times 10 times 11 times 9 over 9 factorial. That's 9 all the way down to 3 1. 9 factorial, we'll cancel with 9 factorial there. And we'll have 12 times 10 times 11. Mm -hmm. times, 12 times 11 times 10. That's what it makes sense. That's 13. Uh, 13. 13, number 13? No, no 13, 13, 20. 20. Oh, 13, 20 is the number. instance where we're doing the same experiment. What is the experiment? Flip a coin. We're doing it a bunch of times in a row. How many times are we doing this in a row? 14, 14 times in a row. Okay, so that'd be n. Um, and we want to have how many successes? One. Just once. Okay, so that'd be k. k is the number of successes. What's the probability of getting a heads? One out. Every time. What's the probability of not getting a heads? One out. One out. So we have this formula, n c k t to k. 1 minus p to n minus k. We've got 14 flips. 
choose one. That's how many ways we can have one heads in 14 coin flips in the first position, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, all the way down to the 14. So this should turn out to be 14. Uh, times one half, that's the probability that we are going to see a heads raised to the first power. It's also going to be, we're going to multiply by a half the rest of 13 times. Okay. Where's that coming from? Just a reminder. Let's say that we get a heads, then we get a tails, then we get a tails, and all the way down uh, to the 14th one, we get a tails. That's where we get the one half to the first times one half to the 13th. And whether that heads is the first, or second, or third, or fourth, or whatever, wherever it is, wherever it might fall, still there's one probability of success and 13 probabilities of failure that multiply together. And then multiply that by 14, because there's 14 ways to have that heads somewhere in those 14 flips. Next question? Okay, so a company guarantees customer satisfaction on a purchase of product. For the company will refer the purchase price of its previous experience, experience has shown that 7% of the purchase are returned. What is the probability of more, no more than one of the next six purchases is to be returned? Okay. So, kind of a situation is this. Is this like the coin flips? Or is it not like the coin flips? It's not like the coin flips. Okay, so. Uh, and on one hand, we're flipping a coin. That's the experiment in the previous one. What's the experiment here? You're asking people. Well, yeah. They buy, like, the experiment is purchasing, like having somebody purchase the item and uh, seeing if they return it, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I guess the experiment is just kind of waiting around to see if somebody comes back and gets their money back. And we're going to do this several times. How many times are we going to conduct this experiment of seeing if someone returns an item? Six times. How many successes did we have? One. One? No more. No more than one. No more than one. one. How many successes is that? Zero or one. So we need to find two probabilities and do all of them. Um, add them together. Zero or one. Right? Expanding. Probabilities getting bigger, we would add them. If you multiply probabilities, we get smaller and smaller and smaller number. Multiply probabilities, we're talking about something that's less and less and less and less likely. But if we allow for zero return or one return, right, those probably, that's a bigger probability. So we add those two probabilities together. Okay, so for one success, we would have uh, six purchases, C1, times what's the probability of them returning it? 0 0.07. 0 0.07 to the first power times the probability that they don't return it. 0.072 to the um, 0.93. What? Well, we can do it to the zero, right? Yeah. None of them are returned, or that's just silly. And all we have is 0.93 to the six. And 0.07 to the zero is one, right? We need the zero power is one. So that's, that's all it is. It's just 1 times 1 times 0.936. That's all it is. So uh, that's going to be pretty likely, really, really likely that they won't return the item. And if we do that six times in a row, it's going to be pretty, pretty likely that that is going to happen. Six no returns. So 0 0.93 to the sixth. It's 0.6469. C1 right here, you, if you
you wanted to, I know it's going to come out to be 6. So I'll just do 6 times 0.07 to the first. I don't need to put 2 to the first. Times 0.93 to the fifth. 0.292. And add these together, 0.292 plus 0.647. So no more than one, that means the only allowable number of returns is zero, and one is time probability you can add together. That makes sense. Yeah. Oh. Oh. oh, you had a question on that still? No, I've just got no question. All right, we'll switch over to somebody else. Wait, yes. you asked that one, right? Oh, okay. Well, I don't know. We'll do both of them anyway. So you said 25? Yeah. OK. Does this sound familiar? Probability of big code. The probability that something happens is such and such. And then we're going to do that thing several times. How is the probability that it happens so and so times? Right? Yeah. So we're going to look for those things. Like what's the probability of, of the success? What is success? How many times do we want it to happen? Um, so basically, if you graduate from State View <coughs> um, and you interview, If you interview at this place and you graduated from this uh, this school, you're thirty percent likely to be hired. Um, nine are chosen at random, so there's going to be nine interviews. Probability that exactly three of them will be hired. Okay. So what's the experiment? It's not flipping a coin. Three is the successes, nine is the number of trials. What's the experiment? That's a success. That's a description of a success. So that's the outcome of doing what experiment? Like what happens before you hire? You go for the interview. The, the, the nine things that are going to happen are nine interviews. Right? That's, that's the experiment. So the success of that experiment is being hired. So how many times are we running that experiment? How many trials? Nine trials. Three, this is how many ways three out of nine interviewees will be hired. Right? Times the probability that um, three out of nine are successful. So what's the probability that person X gets hired? Three to the third times what's the probability they don't get hired? Seven. Seven to the sixth. There it is. I just have a really important question. Yep. Um, on 26, are the five coins being to tossed at the same time? Or is it just the same coin being tossed? Um, unless you're really being tricky, no way that I know of would make a difference. All right. All right. Because whether I flip five coins at once, I can imagine there's some kind of an order to them, right? Yeah. Like the one from left to right, or the one that hits the table the first, and to the last, right? So there's some kind of order to be implied there. The thing is that they are five distinctly different coin flips. Whether they're distinctly different because it's the same coin at different times, or different coins at the same time, there's something that's different about all of them. Does that make sense? Yeah. Or you paint all of them a different color, they would all be different. So the red one Did you say 12?